Welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. I think this might be the match of the entire series. We got Whip versus Striker, maybe not with the finals. Whip versus Striker, upper right and corner wave Whip starting as the teal turn, bottom right and corner wave Striker starting as the blue Zerg. This is a classic North American battle. It's going to be on Vermeer. Striker, one of the top three Zergs in North America. Whip, arguably one of the top Terran in North America. I think Gypsy, I'm trying to think of the guys ahead of him. I think Gypsy, Artosis, now that he's in Canada, Nyokan probably, Exit is probably, he's, I think he might be better than Exit right now. But he's up there. He's up there. He's a good Terran player. He can take, he can take games off Striker. I think these guys are evenly enough matched and close enough in MMR that it's going to be an exciting one. That is what I am trying to uh, articulate here. And it's on Vermeer, which is an interesting match. Uh, map again it's that map with the spokes in between where they can have some of those high ground engagements and when it comes down to mutiling micro versus medic marine ball you can't ask for a better atmosphere striker one of those guys between him and hawk i feel like they have a similar play style but i feel like striker is much more apt is i feel like hawk is more geared to moving into defense where Stryker will more often try to pull the trigger and go for the win. He'll just go for the throat at any given point in time. If he sees an opening, he's going to try to... So I feel like Stryker can be an exciting player in that regard, but Hawk ends up with a bit of a... In his defensive play style is stronger, where Stryker sometimes, if he's being forced to play defensively, sometimes can have trouble, in particular, setting up lurker lines and getting the reinforcements there and... Point being, I think he plays better when he is in a situation where he's like going for the jugular, streaming units across the map. We'll see what Whip is going to cook up for him. There's an initial barracks being built. Overlord making its way bottom left. SCV checking top left corner. This drone is going to come across and find Whip's base first. See if he can get some harassment done, maybe slow down. Is he going to hang around? Yeah. Attack that SCV. 12 hatch opposite side. This SCV gonna make its way bottom right. This SCV gonna return home. So on the timing of it. <clears throat> the Marine gonna go ahead and try to push that drone back. And the SCV seeing those Zerglings in the field right here knows that it is more than not, more than likely a uh, hatch free opener. Spawning pool gonna finish. We have gas already mining for Striker. Striker's Mutalus Micro probably the strongest at this tournament. And actually that, I will say between Hawk and Striker, unless something's dropped recently, I do want to say I feel like Striker's Mutalist Micro is just like a, a hint stronger than Hawk's. Might be, I might get some flack for that. Hawk might be, come on! It's just in this, the games that I have seen. And that's not saying Hawk's Mutalist Micro is bad by any means, but it's saying by the smallest of margins, I think Striker's might be a little bit better. Of course, he might deny that himself. I don't know. Anyway. Got to give the controversial takes when you're out here to keep the games interesting. <clears throat> Stir things up. Let everybody else argue about it. Uh, Zorglings chasing down that SV as its bit of minerals layer moving it. It looks like it is going to be a two hatch mutalisk opener. And that SCV is going to be able to, well, maybe. Nope. Explodes on the line. It has the mineral, so it gets that double explosion. And what is this? Whip going for a proxy factory mid map. So dropping a bunker on the front, but also doing a quick wheel around into a 1-1-1. So everything is articulating standard. So just kind of showing standard play. Does Striker coincidentally spot this moving out? Doesn't look like it. He's gonna move that drone bottom left to drop that third hatchery. Second gas being grabbed, so it looks like he is thinking about dedicating to a larger mutilus count early. The spire being built. But let's see if Whip is able to get a Vulture out and make something happen. And if that's going to catch Striker off guard. To be honest, I feel like this might just get straight up hard countered. Because, yeah. Okay, dropping a Machine Shop as well. I'm interested to see what this turns into. And if he doesn't just get pile drive by Mutalist heads up. So two thirds there. Because this cuts into the Marine count heavily. Which means you need a bajillion turrets on your front. There's the Academy. 
third hatch being dropped at the nearby... I don't, I'm not sure what to call this. Inside six? So what, so this is technically six, right? So five, so five o'clock, inside five o'clock. Spire's gonna finish. We're gonna have six mules in the air. Not a lot of Marines to engage this. And the Vulture's now being produced with Vulture speed. So I think this could be interesting. So the mules are gonna have to draw back to engage the Vultures. That is just what's gonna need to happen. <clears throat> so stop them from obliterating the drone lines. But as soon as those vultures are taken care of, unless maybe that'll buy some time for Whip to get some additional anti-air out, but this is a big risk. So the mules are out. A couple of them are hanging out to deal with the SCVs. They're making their way across. Two vultures have been produced. Speed is going to finish, and these mutalists look like they're going to be out of position. Nope. Just kidding. Creek Colony being dropped. Hatchery being dropped. I don't think this is a full front door seal, and it doesn't look like that's going to be in time, so the mutalists engaging, seeing a lack of barracks. He has to know something's up, turning around immediately. The vulture is instead scooting, trying to find something there. Is this a full seal? It is a full seal. So Striker last second, sniffing it out, blockading everything on the front, also getting the creep colony down. And man, that's gonna allow these needles to just absolutely devastate the back line. <clears throat> yeah, that might be GG right there. The Marines trying to make their way up, but honestly, this is just like sending cannon fodder in. And this is where, yeah, we're really going to get to see some awesome striker mutilus, Micro. It looks like he's just going to hold position them back here. The Vultures still are going to be able to at least do something to harass that third base, but I don't think it matters because it is going to be a completely disheveled and empty base. A Valkyrie being produced. That Armory still getting tacked down. That's going to get wiped out. And honestly, not a lot of mining happening here. So Whip trying to make the best out of potentially not the best situation. Lurker aspect being upgraded behind this, looking at the low medic marine count. And one Mutalist gets taken out as it's making way across. They are heavily battered, but should be able to make it back to the main to deal with these vultures. Mutalist being morphed. Yeah, now starting to attack. Some drones are going to die along the way. But yeah, as soon as some Hydralisks make their way out towards the natural. Whip needs to get some attack forces to deal with what could be a lurker muta combination. Is that Overlord going to finally find that factory mid-map? The one thing that, that the mines might be the saving grace between here and there. If this Overlord just makes an inch towards the interior, though, you can see Striker still looking for some aggression. Overlord spots the vultures making their way back. Sunk Colony is required to get mining happening here. It's not yet up. So some drones potentially going to lose their lives. Whip really making a game of this. Queen's Nest coming online. The Mutalists make their way back across. A slew of lurkers morphing. In the midst of this, and here's the other thing, is a striker doesn't necessarily need to attack with these lurkers either. He can go ahead and sit back. I don't think he will. I think he will be aggressive because he's striker. But I don't feel like he needs to. Although some lurkers potentially going to lose their lives. So one lurker down. Yeah, they're going to hold up short right there. Across the middle, this is allowing Whip some time to stabilize. He's getting some bunkers down to at least survive against this. Second factory... <laughs> it's hard to say that. Second factory being dropped. Third gas coming online. Hive tech on the way. So now Whip... He's got three barracks down. He's got a dropship. The dropship could be huge. Range being upgraded. Have the mules found that factory mid? Yeah, okay, so now they found the factory, so at least can start working on that. Vulture still able to get an exposed spot, still taking out drones to the bottom right, critically cutting off that third gas to allow Striker to really utilize that hive tech. The mules is going to draw off that factory to go ahead and deal with that. Whip really being... Frustrating. Some mines planted in between. The lurker's gonna hold up in no man's land. Some additional mines gonna protect Whip so he can stabilize. Dropship loaded up. If he can get a miracle drop at the hive, 
maybe can make things work, but keep in mind there's still those Mutalisk and those Scourge hanging out, and he's got to find a blind spot somewhere out here, and there's an Overlord along this window. Zergling's being sent out to mine clear between here and there. The dropship taking the far right route, a Zergling on patrol. Does he see it? I don't know if he saw it or not. The Mulus, I, he did. He's drawing back. One, two Marines being dropped to disrupt there. The Zergling's going to run in. And unfortunately, the Marines getting obliterated there. They're, yeah. Striker catching that dropship. Going to be able to wipe everything out here. And now, Striker with the supply lead, Hive Tech finished. Double Evolution Chamber and a Defiler Bound up. Whip in trouble. I like the creativity, but might get an Overlord kill there if he wants it. Starting to march out to maybe grab a third, but yeah, he's got to shell up hard and get some fire bats out here. Or something. Striker grabbing bottom left-hand corner. Some Zerglings along that edge, and honestly, this is sufficient enough attack force where potentially, if these Marines and Medics are strung out, they could get some kills. It looks like they're just going to draw back to that. Is this whole position Lurker? Nope, not whole position Lurker, so... Still going to get some Marine kills, but not going to... Well... I was going to say, not going to obliterate that entire line, but nope, they're going to obliterate that entire line. <clears throat> so Whip, going to lose what's left of that marauding attack force. The Lurker's burrowing and not even needing to. The Zerglings can charge forward, do some mine clearage in front of this. Whip trying to take a very exposed third. Yeah, slowly crawling forward. Walking away, just letting the Zerglings do the mind drags. But Striker, again, he can just sit back and mine. He's got the Nidus Canal up. He's got the Defiler Mound up. Hive is here. Plus one weapons working for Zergling. And honestly, he can just move up some Defilers. If he gets Overlord Speed finished, I don't even know that he needs Overlord Speed. If he just jets some Zerglings forward, clears the mines, he can get a Contain on Whip. Whip just relying on these mines to try to defend. And he's got nothing defending that 12 o'clock base. Dropping some comp set to see what he's up against. Sees that there's that base bottom left. Surging some vultures that direction, but there's lurkers there on the ramp. Mutal sweeping through. Scourge right there to deal with them. Between that and the mutalist, the mutalist, the mutalist there. Well, I was gonna say. Might be able to wipe that out with ease, but not enough Mulus left. Another Valkyrie being produced. And it is a full mech switch now for Whip. Starting to produce Siege Tanks Vultures. As long as Striker is a little bit diligent to go ahead and, well, Whip swinging around, able to pin some troops in, delay, maybe get some more mines planted and some Vultures buying himself some time in between here. He needs to constantly harass now along this right-hand corridor. Because if a Defiler and Dark Swarm get there, that's basically it. And yeah, it needs to continually sweep across here, pick off those Zerglings, because if a Zergling runs free, that is fewer mines that are going to be there to defend. Needless, the last one needles being wiped out. Marines piling in, but more Zerglings streaming forward. There's still... Uh, okay, one mine is going to be sweeped out. And now... Lurker's able to push through, the Defiler able to save its own life. And it just feels like protected pawns moving their way up the map here for to make a chess metaphor. Not sure why. I, I don't think I've ever made a chess metaphor in StarCraft up to this stage, and there it is. Seems like it's the default one. Ultralist Cavern's up. A slew of mine's still there, but again, Zerglings are getting ever closer. Currently holding on that spoke. The 12 o'clock location actually running pretty well for Whip. He's still behind the supply, but he's got a good amount of siege tanks out. He has plus one weapon, so he might have actually turned this around. He might have sufficient siege tanks to deal with the Lurker switch. Striker still with a much stronger economy. He's going to have five bases versus three. The Defiler gets wiped out. Lurker's currently spreading. Zerglings, are they going to find that 12 o'clock? could shoot through things rather rapidly to 
Vulture's pressing through and able to clear that out. That bottom right hand base could be somewhat exposed if Lurkers don't defend on the low ground. So now Striker has to move into, yeah, more of a long term upgrading Burrow, actually. So I. Yeah, I wouldn't be shocked if he just takes the Defiler and burrows it along the way up to the right, realizing that that Science Vessel count's going to be smaller. Three Machine Chops down to get those Siege Tanks out. And Whip starting to take bases in the upper left, which is absolutely critical if you're going Mech, because you need a lot of resources to make this work. It is now about favorable trades. Ventral Sacks upgraded for potential drops on mech, and whoa. That is a lot of Ultralisks. Okay, a lot of Ultralisks, but is the mine coverage sufficient, and are there sufficient siege tanks to splat? All of that beef. A lot of cows on the field. Striker also grabbing that 6 o'clock. Another fun thing to do is to go ahead and make your way up to Greater Spire and make that chaos happen. <clears throat> Honestly, I wouldn't put it past Striker to go ahead and do for a, a go for a full switch. So, Overlord's being loaded up. Somehow that Vulture able to sneak through. It's going to get cleaned up by Zerglings bottom right. But Ultralis gathering to the left hand side. They could go ahead. Yeah, they could probably wipe out everything up there. They're kind of running out, just being a source of havoc. And Doom drops starting to migrate their way around. This should be an indicator to Whip that, okay, yeah, I need to get in position to have something to deal with that in in a hurry. This kind of reminds me of the Lord of the Rings meme, we'll shoot the catapult over their defenses. And this is, yeah, a killer. Defiler lur Lurker to just go right above. So looking to the main, gonna find nothing there, but can still go ahead and drop right at the natural to wipe that out. Ultralis between here and there, a lot of mines stirring them down, and Siege Tank starting to take the field in between. That's one dead Siege Tank to one Zergling, too. So sad. So that's it for everything top left. Now Whip potentially in trouble as he's, his main is going to be mined out shortly. His natural is very, very thin. He's got the 12 o'clock base up and running, but doesn't have a lot of other prospects. There are Ultralisks absolutely everywhere. He's having to lift everything top left. And Striker is looking to grab that 3 o'clock and is still sitting at five bases and a ton of workers and a bunch of gas. Is near max supply and is doom dropping stuff all over the place. Turrets, oh, that turret very close to coming online. Could be saving grace. Nope, with now losing what is one of his last mining base positions. Gonna turn around, try to redrop there. The Ultralis no longer threatening that location. Looks like they've exited to the south. But Whip has managed to get a huge amount of mech out on the ground with what he's got. So if he can reestablish some of this and grab some bases, he might be okay. Three o'clock base being grabbed from Striker. Striker's gonna have to potentially new drop some of these lines. However, yeah, these rear drop, lurker, defiler drops are catastrophic. You see how long it takes to evict all of this. Just almost feels like futile effort. Science vessels in the fray. Overlord's going to hang out in no man's land. Hydralis pushing up, but not getting anywhere near those siege tank lines. So we got pure shelled up mech, late game for whip. Plus two weapons, plus one armor. Hydralis with plus two carapace. Setting up sacrificially, not getting a lot accomplished aside, uh, honestly not great trades there, just losing their lives. Whip setting up a deep line. Overlord's pressing forward with Ultralis in tow. Dropping all over those siege tanks. And even though they even with that plus five Carapus, you can see how quickly they're getting obliterated. This is actually where I feel like Zerdlings in these drops are a little bit more effective. Because these tanks do max damage versus Ultralisks. Maybe do some Hydro drops in the midst of this, but that was a lot of siege tanks wiped out. Whip not contending with supplies, starting to stage forward. 
taking some territory away from Striker. And now Whip has to have that delicate balance of Goliath, Siege Tanks, things in between. Overlord's getting wiped out. I'm gonna say it, like, Striker still has a big supply lead, but it looks like he's losing control of this match. As Whip's starting to tunnel forward with a huge amount of Siege Tanks. The Overlords don't have Zerglings or anything else grouped up to respond, and right now Striker, even though he has 182 supply, Never mind, here come the queens. Wasn't paying attention to the main. Spawn broodling all over this, and with that, Whip's gonna GG, so ignore what I said. Quick turnaround. <laughs> I, that is the most satisfying, embarrassing moment I will ever have as a caster. Insta sweep around, Striker finding the queens. Should have paid more attention. It's hard to catch those in the background. Well played. We'll move on to game two. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.